Hi, my name's Katie and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to give you an update on this 100 litre patio pond that I put together about a month and a half ago. It's a super simple low maintenance setup and it's got a mix of guppies, balloon mollies and cloud minnows in here at the moment. And as you can see there's some little fish, I don't know if you'll be able to see them on the camera, but some of the fish are just swimming up into this bowl that we put in here last week. The fish are actually doing really well. I started off just with a bunch of guppies in here and I thought that I maybe had some that I lost but there hasn't been any predation on the fish that I've got in here at the moment. I've still got all of the balloon mollies. I got four last week. No, two weeks ago now I got four of them. I got two kind of cow, moo cow ones I call them. They're like white ones with black speckles and then I got two orange ones and then I got a bunch of cloud minnows as well and some guppies and I can see that my balloon mollies are still alive and I would say that they would be the ones I would have thought would go first if any of them were going to get eaten by anything. So I'm really pleased to see that they're still here. When I got those fish a couple of weeks ago I wasn't sure what I was gonna like. It really seems like the balloon mollies are thriving well. I honestly didn't expect to like them in here that much. I was gonna get normal mollies and the only reason I got balloon ones is because I really wanted to get the ones that were white with the black speckles and I couldn't get them in the normal variant of molly and I've been pleasantly surprised. They've actually coped really well in here and they're really adorable fish. I just love watching them swim around. It's so what I'm really keen to do is get a bunch more balloon mollies to put in here. We're going to head to Mad Aquariums, my local aquarium store, and we're going to get some more balloon mollies to pop in here. In last week's video, I also was giving you a little bit of an update on my Tanganyikan African cichlid tank. I had a cyanobacteria um, outburst in there, and I was also dealing with quite a bit of green algae. So I've got a really interesting update on that tank to give you as well. But first, I think let's go and get these balloon mollies while it's still daylight. One of the things you may have noticed as well is this used to be different, this one here, which I'm going to try not to break. That used to be sitting in here and I couldn't believe how many comments I got on the video from a couple of weeks ago of people saying you prefer the round one. I totally agree. I think that it looks a lot more cohesive with the round pond and everything. The only thing that I think could be different, which a lot of people mentioned as well, is just changing that white stand to a black one or even just working out a way to paint that if there's some type of aquarium safe paint that I can get. I think I will do that just so it doesn't stand out as much, especially being a circle. It kind of magnifies certain things, including the white stand, so it doesn't look quite as natural. I can even see a molly just in there. At the moment, I'm filming on the same day that I'm uploading videos pretty much, which I actually really enjoy doing. It helps keep me motivated when I'm just doing it all in one day. It's just been really handy doing some stuff from home lately. I'm in the process of getting some merchandise sorted out. Of course, I don't expect people to be buying things. This is just an optional thing if you like the designs and you like the shirts and stuff and you want to support the channel in some way it's just an avenue that you can do that. Got some orders on the way that I just want to test some final things out but we are getting there. It won't be too much longer. Alrighty so I'm now at Mad Aquariums. Had a little bit of an outfit change. This is still the same day. It was extremely hot outside. So on our way to winter and I bet everyone in America is really pleased and the UK too that you guys are going to be heading into summer and warming up a little bit uh, but for us we're going to be cooling down soon. Just not quite yet. It's still actually very hot at the moment uh, but we are here now and I just had a little look and they do have the mollies so they've got the ones I like with the little speckles too which is awesome. Last time I came in I just gave you guys a little bit of a look at all of their awesome scapes and stuff. This whole section here that's all plants but then what they've got next to it they've got an entire place here where they've got all of these beautiful scapes. I did show this in a video a couple weeks ago so I won't go over it too much since you've already seen it before but just for anyone who hasn't seen I thought I'd just quickly run through it. I've got all of these beautiful planted aquariums here and not only do they have these on display but they're actually for sale now so for this one for example you can buy the whole thing including all the plants and everything for $5,000 I think the only thing that's not included is just the little CO2 thing there but everything else you get which is awesome there was one thing though that I did miss that I didn't show you last time it used to be on this side which is why I missed it but it's been moved to over here it's so beautiful and so a little while ago I uploaded an escaping video for my Tanganyika and African cichlid tank and in that you will see that I used a glue. So it's like a liquid glue that you put some tissue in between the rock and it will glue little pieces of or even big pieces of rock together. And that is Mad Aquarium's glue. So Jack gave it to me to try out 
and it worked awesome and this is also how they created this so of course it would be really difficult to find a piece of rock that would go together so nicely and fit so well in here so what you do is you make it yourself so you can glue all of these rocks together to make it look like one big piece and then also glue bits of moss and stuff so it looks like a beautiful natural waterfall so nice but that is not what we're here for so we're going to head through into the fish area so we're going to pass all these beautiful little bedders in here to their aquarium fish section so this stall is really incredible we've got such a wide range of fish available if you're local to the area this is a great place to have a look at but even if you're not and you're just thinking about setting up a tank then this might give you a little bit of an idea on what you can look for as well and the type of fish that I've got in my aquarium too. These ones in particular, these ones are from Lake Tanganyika and these ones are from Lake Malawi and then there's also Lake Victorian cichlids that you'll see sometimes too but they're really the closest freshwater fish that you can get to a saltwater fish. They're colourful but also the type of water that they like to be in is hard water so the pH is very high. The Lake Malawi cichlids are around an 8.2 to an 8.6 you can push them up to but then your Tanganyikan cichlids you can go more for like an 8.4 to an 8.9 so a lot higher than a lot of your river fish like these guys like the South American cichlids here which you will see more at like a neutral pH and then some fish like your bedders and stuff that we saw just around the corner there or like fighting fish and some goldfish too I believe they'll normally like softer water so a little bit of a lower pH not all of those fish so the mollies that we're going to be looking at and guppies as well actually and platies too do quite well in hard water also in fact I think mollies or platies either one of those can actually uh, live in a brackish water so that's fresh water with a little bit of salt water not enough to be salt water yeah. oh these ones are the sword tails too so some of these fish they need a heater so they're more tropical your mollies and your platties and your guppies which we're going to be looking at but then these guys here, these sword tails, they're actually, there's a lot of them in the rivers around here from people who have let their fish go and they do quite well because they don't need a heater, they can live in colder water just like goldfish as well. So that is something I'm going to have to look at is getting a heater or just some way to be able to heat that outdoor pond. It's possible that they might be able to survive, it might not get too low. Uh, some people have had success keeping guppies outdoors in the Brisbane region but we're just going to have to see. I think that I'll have a look into it and I'll see what I can do so that we've at least we know that they'll be okay. Uh, but that's going to be a plan as it starts to cool down. Thankfully not cooling down just yet at all though but I'm sure it's coming very soon. What we'll do is they're a little bit busy right now just serving people but let me just give you a look at some of the other cool fish they've got in here so it's always really fun coming in here because they get a lot of variety of fish you never really know what's going to be in here like we've got some moray eels which i think is really cool at the moment so these tiger morays so awesome i love eels i think they're really cool i find them a little bit scary like i don't know how i would go keeping them because they kind of remind me of snakes a little bit but I think they're awesome. There's a really cool page I follow. I don't know if anyone has seen it, especially he's on Instagram, but his Insta is like cow turtle or something like that. But he has an eel pit. I think he goes by the eel pit guy too. And he, I think he works at a pet store in America, but he has the most awesome setup ever. So he turned his basement into an eel pit. And it's not just eels, he's got like sturgeons and stuff like that in there. But I think he's really into caves and stuff. So he's got a lot of, of creatures that like darker areas. So it's all nice and dark down there for them. And I just love, like you can hear when he's talking, it's all like echoey and stuff. And he posted on his story not that long ago. Uh, that he went to some caves and they were looking at like prehistoric bones and stuff. And there was these crawfish that were living pretty much in complete darkness in there, like right in the depths of these caves it was really really cool so not these ones in particular they were a special type but I just thought that was really awesome but these guys are so cool too look at that that is awesome I love the colors that some of these crayfish have on them 
And so speaking of brackish water fish too, that's like these guys too, these scats, they are brackish water as well. So fresh water, but a bit of salt, like brackish is kind of like your estuary fish. So the ones that often maybe like they might breed up further in the rivers where it's fresher water and then the fry slowly make their way down. So they classify them as brackish, but can sometimes go to full salt too for some of them. Some of your ones like Moonies, I think they're called, you can do that with. And then archer fish too, I think they're also estuary kind of fish or maybe not quite estuary, but they can also have a bit of brackish water. And then you've also got some native fish here. So these are native to this area actually. You can go and find these guys in the creeks here, which is what I used to do. Oh, actually these are Bosmani ones, it says. So not these ones in particular. So these ones are not native to here. I just did a shed aquarium on you. So funny when I visited shed aquarium, they had their native Australian set up, but they had a bunch of Bosmati fish in there, which are not actually native rainbow fish. They're close to here, but not quite. Uh, but I think these ones, yeah, so honey blue eyes, these guys, which are quite tiny in here, they're native to the creeks here. I have to go probably a little bit further north, although we did find some locally here, but a little, they're a little bit more prominent further north. <laughs> Look at this greyfish go. It's reaching right up. Some loaches in here too, another awesome type of fish. Love loaches, they're so cool and they're so friendly. I saw, I think it was Dustin's fish tank posting about dojo loaches. He was saying it's his favorite type of fish ever because they're so friendly and they eat algae and stuff. They're like this bright yellow loach. I don't think I have seen them here before. So I've got these ones, clown loaches, and we've got lots of yo-yo loaches here but I don't know if we have dojo loaches in Australia. If anyone has ever seen them here, can you let me know? Because I'm actually really curious to know whether we have them or not. They've also just got more of this your kind of basic freshwater river fish. Love seeing stingrays. Another fish that I love looking at, but I just don't know if I would ever personally keep them because I think that I would be a little bit scared of them stinging me. And it's never good when you're scared of your own pet. Uh, but I do love to look at them. I appreciate them in other people's tanks. So let me just give you a closer look now. It's not as busy over there. I'm gonna show you the fish that I'm looking at getting. Up here, we've got our guppies. So these are the ones that we'll need a heater eventually. We've got our sword tails. We get that really long sword tail, the males do. And then down here, we have our little guys that we wanna to get to put in our pond, which are the balloon mollies. You can see that you've got your normal mollies just next door here and they're a little bit more slender look a little bit more like the sword tails and then these guys are kind of podgy and the ones that i really love are the ones just behind there these guys here like these speckly looking ones those speckly guys are the ones that i'm after i really really like the speckly ones but i think we'll get a couple of the platinum white ones as well let's get the three speckly ones and then maybe four of the white ones as well so we'll get five all together. Normally I find that when you get a fish like this and it's a little bit genetically modified in terms of they've selectively bred it to have different traits to what's normal so making these guys rounder compared to the normal type of variant sometimes they're not as strong and as hardy. If we look at like a typical goldfish you can see how these guys look like a normal goldfish right they're just slender pretty easy for them to swim and everything. And then when you look at these guys up here, they're bred to not have a top fin and they've got that kind of curved spine as well. Especially like if you were doing like an outdoor pond, it wouldn't really be as low maintenance if you were keeping these types of goldfish because of their selective breeding, they're not quite as hardy as normal goldfish. Uh, you would need a lot bigger than what I've got. I've only got a hundred liters. You would need way more to keep goldfish because they produce so much waste. But you would probably also want to go for normal ones. I would love to keep koi in a pond, but we unfortunately can't keep koi here. Some koi sword tails instead. And you can get koi guppies too. I was actually looking at these guys and I was thinking they're quite nice. And you know, they would go pretty well because they wouldn't need a heater and stuff. But I feel like I've kind of committed to getting a heater now since I want guppies and mollies, so it kind of defeats the purpose. But let me know what you think. What do you think of the sword tails? I think I kind of have a bit of a negative stigma against them because they're pests in the rivers here. Well, let me go and see if I can find someone to get our mollies. And I just saw this guy here too. Look at this. Like a huge pleco. Can I get the, all of the speckled ones? Like the three, ones. yep, the three speckled ones, and then I'll just get the two of the platinum yeah. ones. Oh, you got some nice guppies in the platinum ones and the rest of the white ones, correct? Yes, please. And I might even grab some guppies too. 
Oh, you guys actually have a little koi guppies too. They're cool. Yeah. Very nice. Alright, sorry for this like insanely close up shot I'm just in the car. I just got my mollies and guppies. So we've got these guys just in there and we're ready to head home with them. And then I will show you the tank and egan tank and give you a bit of an update on how that's going too. So that's like the fish that I showed you a lot of in the store with tank and egan ones too. I've just been outside and what happened was I filmed this already but I forgot to turn my mic on so I didn't have any sound but luckily I realized before I released the guppies so those guys um, just went in and I just mentioned too with quarantining how it's generally recommended to quarantine new fish in this case I'm not worrying about it I don't think they're going to have anything mad aquariums have really good practices anyway for quarantining fish that they get in and look after their fish really well but let's go and add the guppies in what I've also done is I just floated them in here a little bit just to acclimate them to the temperature and here are our little guppies that we are going to add in now well at least this time I'm not stirring up the water and making it super muddy because we didn't have to do anything with our bowl this time all right and in go our little guppies beautiful they shine really nicely the blue kind of green colored ones so now we've got a few more fish in here, we should start to be able to, I can already see one going up into the bowl, be able to actually see a little bit more action and more movement going on in here. So you can probably see a bunch of, I think you can see some cloud minnows actually swimming in this area here. You can probably see a little balloon molly, I think. Just, nope, that's a bubble, Never mind. I'm looking through the camera. But there goes a guppy, you can see an orange balloon molly. They didn't have any orange ones, any orange balloon ones, unfortunately. That would be another thing I'd like to add is maybe some orange ones at some point. So you can see how the guppies still look really beautiful from above, even if they're not going into this bowl here. Like it's still really nice just having a look at all of the fish. You can see them under the light here and they look really nice in the sun as well. So we'll let these guys settle in for a little bit. I'm gonna go have some dinner and then we're gonna move on to the tank and Eakin cichlid tank and I'm gonna give you a look at how the algae ended up going in there because it was getting very crazy. So I can't believe it. This is the first time I've ever actually just willingly invited Layla out to be in a video. Normally she won't be quiet. Please don't bite me. Maybe I'm gonna regret this actually. She might be in a bad mood. They're very temperamental. <laughs> this is a parrotlet. I think a lot of parrots are like that. Sometimes she'll be in a good mood, sometimes not. Throughout the month it can change. I might put her back, but I'm gonna put her back. I just thought I'd include her a little bit since she hasn't been in it for a while, but let's just let her be. I won't take up too much time talking about this tank. I just wanna give you a quick update and then later on we can go in a little bit more detail uh, and everything when a bit more time has passed. This stuff here I got from Jack from Mad Aquariums. It's a red cyano treatment and it is actually meant for salt water tanks, but I used it on my freshwater tank and it has worked really well. It has been exactly a week since I treated this tank. It's done a really good job of getting rid of the cyanobacteria I could probably do another treatment I would say because I can see a little bit I believe just under the substrate on this side here and if we go and take a look around the other side you can see there might be a little bit still around the substrate these guys are hungry so I'm gonna give them some food because I actually have some new food that I can show you as well that recently got sent to me so lovely Nigel from Aquarium Central sent me these in the mail they arrived earlier in the week these ones are not available yet he said they'll be available near the end of the year. So I'll show you the other foods in another video but the one I want to focus on right now is the instant baby brine because I just genuinely think it is so cool. You can see it's just like almost like a powdery thing. I think it's like little eggs. All you do is a quarter cup of water, a teaspoon to a quarter cup. This is a quarter of a quarter of a teaspoon so I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four. You stir it and get them to sink a little bit let it sit for five minutes and then it came with this little pipette that you use to squirt it in these are so good even for doing for testing water but they're so easy to lose because they're see-through so it's been five minutes we've got our pipette and our little brine trim 
baby brines to feed to our fish. Now, because this food is so tiny, the ones that really like it are these really small little sardine cichlids that I got a little while back. So they were from Nick's Oceanarium and they have a lot of growing to do, but they are like obsessed with this. When I fed it to them earlier in the week, they loved it. So I'm guessing they'll probably be the main ones that will go after it. The bigger fish, not so much because it's just a little bit tiny for them, but you will see. All right, I'm just gonna squirt it in like that and you'll, oh my gosh, I'll get some more. You'll see all these tiny bits. So this is really good for fry. So these Tanganyan cichlids have been doing a little bit of breeding. So I'm really keen if I do see them breed that anymore and I wanna raise some fry, I can use something like this, which is perfect for me because I'm not super into the idea of having to keep brine shrimp. It seems kind of difficult to me. So you can see a little sardine cichlid just over there. That is really enjoying it. They really, really love it, the sardine cichlids. And so that's a, a big male sardine cichlid with a red tail that is also really enjoying it. I don't, you know, I think it even has anything to do with their size. Uh, it just seems like this type of Tanganyikan fish in particular really, really likes it compared to the other ones. It's like they just, that's what they want to eat. You can see the yellow tail one going at it. Good thing about this too is you can just put it in your fridge and leave it at another time. I didn't do that when I used this earlier in the week because knowing me, I will forget about it and then I'll just end up with this gross stuff in my fridge a month later. So I just wanted to avoid that. But I think I'll keep it this time because I've got the fish in the pond as well. But yeah, I hope that just gave you a nice little bit of a look at it. Again, it's not available yet, but it will be closer to the end of the year. But I reckon let's go and feed the pond fish some of this and see if they like it. I don't know how these guys are going to respond to this but I'm just going to pop a little bit in and see so you can see these guys are really enjoying it down there I might even put some more in for them oh we got a little one here too honey put some in here it's so cute I have actually got to go and do a water change on my tanks, so I'm going to get busy doing that and finish getting this video together as well. But I hope you enjoyed seeing again another update on this pond and how it's going. It's been really enjoyable and I'm really happy with how it's coming along. Again, it's just a process of fine tuning everything and seeing what I like, but I'm really, I'm liking having the extra fish in here now and I think it's coming together very nicely. So I'm excited to keep you updated on this and how it goes. As always, make sure you give it a like. Your comments, I love reading them as too. Uh, I love reading them too, so please comment as well if you've got any thoughts or just, I don't know if there's anything that you liked in the video or anything that you want to see more of, please do let me know. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing too. I'm really trying to get to the 100,000 subscriber mark, so it really helps when you do that. But otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye.